right, so for today's video, what I'm going to do is prime out using gel primer. And yes, I know I'm a big giant wuss for not just using water, but uh, this pump here has not been out in about shit, two weeks, I would say. So pipes are probably a little dry, a little crusty. I got a half an hour here waiting for concrete anyhow, so I'm going to use a little bit of this stuff. So this is how I typically do it when I'm using this product. So first thing I do, I'm going to put the pump in forward pump. And let it stroke over probably five or six times while spraying water up into the cylinders. So here we go, step one. like that. Now I will tear this packet open. I'll just throw that right in there. Helps with the prime. Not really, but um, one trick with this stuff, if you're in a colder climate, such as we are here, uh, in the winter time I always store these in the cab of the truck. Uh, if you pull them straight out of your toolbox, they're uh, pretty much, I wouldn't say frozen, but uh, consolidated and rock hard, and they become a real bear to actually get out of the package. So what I'll do is I'll just spray some water up into this thing to get all the product out. You really got to spray it out well because the stuff does stick in there pretty good. And now I'm going to add probably three or four gallons of water to this stuff. The longer it sits, the uh, more goopy, shall we say, it gets. So if I'm gonna sit around with this in the hopper for 20 minutes or half an hour, when my concrete does arrive, I will add another couple gallons of water to this. So this is just our first bit of water. Not sure if you can see through the grate there. I'll lift it up for illustrative purposes. You'll notice the uh, road base there piled around the back of my large bearing. I have a previous video about uh, why I like to do this and how it makes washing out at the end of the day so much easier and mitigates getting buildup underneath the back of the bearing on the S2. So anyhow, we'll just mix this stuff up. It does take a, uh, a few minutes to coagulate. Is that the correct word? I don't know, I have a grade 10 pump operator education here, so I could be wrong, but we'll use that word today, coagulate. It's pretty good. And then what I will do when I fill the hopper, we'll put the driver's chute towards that side of the S-tube, put the concrete, fill up that side, spill over the S-tube, pushing the primer into the cylinder while the pump is stroking slowly and forward, drawing the primer into the cylinder. And then I will quickly interrupt and switch the S-tube over before any concrete gets in there. So the first first uh, cylinder is filled with just primer, no concrete. So I'm also going to put the auger in reverse when the first bit of concrete goes in the hopper, just to pull the first rocky bit of concrete away from the cylinders, rather than pushing that rocky first bit directly up into the cylinders. So and then once I get uh, get going, I'll flip the auger around to spinning in the uh, conventional direction. But anyhow, we'll leave that for now. We'll just wait for concrete to get here. Uh, I am going to prime out in a A-frame, even though I am a bit of a uh, fan of Z-booming, uh, but because we are pumping below grade, and like I said, the pump hasn't been out in a while, A-frame is always the safest, most proven method of priming out but I typically will prime out in a Z, no problemo. It's just, uh, today I'll take the easy, tried, tested, and true route. So, check back in a bit. One other note while we are waiting around, I prefer to prime slow, about a stroke every five to seven seconds. A lot of guys are gonna say, no, there's no benefit to that. You should prime fast, gotta put it through fast. Um, get that argument all the time. For our concrete in our area here, which is typically less rocky and uh, more fines, more sand, 
uh, it responds better to priming slow. The other benefit I find of priming slow is, while I'm priming, if it happens to get crunchy in the deck pipe, the first section, the second section, I have plenty of time to chuck the pump in reverse and suck back. Suck back a couple strokes, push it ahead again. Suck back a couple strokes, push it ahead again, and just fight my way through it. If I'm priming through at max volume, by the time it's plugged, if I'm not real quick on the switch, it's hammered in there so tight, now I've got uh, I got bigger problems. My other uh, train of thought, and this is just my theory, pumping fast causes pressure. Pressure causes segregation. So if you got a bunch of water, a bunch of primer, a bunch of concrete behind it, and you're pushing hard on that concrete, you're more likely to segregate. And I found this to be true with the concrete mix designs in our area. So I'm sure certain regions or other regions where they run rockier mixes, perhaps priming through fast is a more successful way to do it. I'm just showing you the way that I do it around here. And uh, yeah, it seems to work well. We've, we've never had luck here priming fast, never had positive results. So. That's how we're going to do it today. One stroke every five to seven seconds, so probably something like 30% on your volume. Nice and slow, and if there is any uh, anything eventful were to happen, we've got lots of time to react, respond, and adjust accordingly. So, strictly my preference. And just another note here while we wait, I know a lot of guys are going to say, why don't you put your primer into the primer port? Uh, the reason why I do not is the threaded stud for this movable cap is a coarse thread and it's surprising how quick those threads will wear out and strip out and you get to the job site and you go to tighten your cap down and the threads are gone and now you're kind of uh, trying to improvise to find a solution to hold this tight throughout the duration of your pour so that's why i typically do not use it um, once again to each their own that's just the way that uh, that I choose to do it, but I, I do agree that it is highly effective just to pull the cap off, spray a little bit of water in here. And the benefit is that you can get away with uh, with priming with less primer or less water. And if you're pouring something that's, uh, you know, finish critical, you're not, uh, you're not wrecking that first half a yard of concrete for your place or finishers. Today, we're just pouring large footing pads. So there's zero concern of that whatsoever. So that's why I'm doing it this way. I do do it that way sometimes, but today's, job calls for doing it the way that I'm going to show you how to so just a preference that is all all right so this is one of those uh, rare instances where we get an extremely favorable position for priming out one section up three sections down not often that this happens actually um, one note about the way that I like to prime out the further the section is from the boom from the base of the boom the turret the more critical that it's in the vertical position. E.g., I really don't want to have that tip section horizontal. I kind of don't want to have the third section horizontal. Second section, first section, I can live with. But by the time you get to the third and the fourth section, highly advantageous to have them in a vertical position such that the concrete is just falling through them whenever possible. So we're gonna go back here now and talk to our driver and uh, do a little, a little primey priming. Okay, ready. Like yeah, your CBSE's out there. Yeah. yeah. I'll swing you over to that side. Excellent. So you put a little bit more water in with this primer, as I mentioned earlier. Five. Yeah, five. five Good. And we're going to put the auger in reverse, like I mentioned as well, like so. And we're just going to wait for our driver to slump up here. And I'm going to prime through on this pump, the volume at about a four, and a couple bumps on the RPM once we get going. Turn the vibrator on once we get rolling. The great vibrator. Okay, here we 
go. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So we'll let that fall on the one side of the edge too. And then when it spills over, I'm going to start stroking. There we go. I'm going to push that primer in there. Stroke it. And interrupt. Boom. Done. So that first uh, first little bit is going to be with a strictly primer. All right, see by you. Thank you. Another little bump on the RPM. And as always, oh, of course they're standing right near my hose. I am going to swing over to the next one to prime out because I don't like priming out with guys standing right there like that. Oh, there we go. Even better. Here we go. Yeah, I do not like ever priming out with somebody within uh, whipping distance of the hose. Once I get the primer through in the first bit of mud, they can do whatever they want. But until that point, not happening. There we go. Hey boss, just hang tight till the first bit comes through. Then you, then you can grab it. So let's see if we hear any kind of crunchiness. Almost 0% chance of that happening with uh, that amount of primer in a small wedge boom like this. Oh, there it is, there it is. So nice, you couldn't even hear it come through. A little push. And we've got concrete. And yeah, that's a three inch hose I've got on there. We're using a small rock mix here. Just make a nice easy day for the placers. We're only doing about 30 yards here, so. I know I'll get comments about that too, but it's a pretty common size in our area. We'll use a three inch hose for up to about 35 yards an hour. Three and a half inch hose up to about 60 yards an hour. Four inch hose up to about 90 yards an hour. And then, God, once every three months we get into a four and a half, or God forbid, a five inch hose. But pretty, pretty rare occurrence down here. Make it a nice relaxing day for these guys, so. Anyhow, check in later. smart asses out there are gonna love this one I got so caught up in the moment guess what I forgot to do forgot to put the auger back and forward easily fixed Doink. But yeah you got me I screwed up I got so caught up in the moment of making this uh, cinematic masterpiece forgot all about the auger levers Oh well, next time I'll do better, I promise. 